welcome to DC Today. It is Thursday, uh, November the 30th, so the day before the first day of December. And uh, we had a great day in the market today, actually for the Dow. The Dow was up 520 points on the day, big move up, and it just sort of melted all the way into the close. So we closed right at the highs of the session. And it was a big divergence today between basically value stocks and, and growth stocks. The NASDAQ was actually down on the day and I wrote yesterday a little bit coincidentally just about the sensitivity to uh, part of the market that's really just had the most multiple expansion in run up with the fall in interest rates, which is it just which is tech, which is fine. But we sort of saw that come off today. Rates moved a little higher. A um, couple of reasons. Uh, we had an inflation read on PCE that came in um, basically in line. Uh, headline was actually a little bit lower. We were expecting 0.1. We got a totally flat number for the month. And um, which put the uh, uh, for the year uh, about three percent flat versus three point one uh, expected. So headline, including food and energy, was actually a little bit better than expected. A little lower inflation. Core, which is really what the Fed pays attention to, was right in line. It was up 02 percent on the month, which is what we expected, and then three and a half percent year over year. So not quite two percent yet, but getting there really fast. And we've written about this a whole lot and spoken about it. But if you took out and, and normalized the owner's equivalent rent inside of that, you'd really already be in the twos. So um, I think the Fed knows that, obviously, as we do. And that's why you're getting a lot of these Fed speakers and officials basically just saying they're restrictive enough at this point and uh, Fed futures pointing to when things will be cut, not when the next increase will be. Um, so all that to say, the uh, I had a little piece in there I thought was interesting. Um, we kind of know just as consumers, the reason why there's been resiliency in housing, the reason why consumers have still been in good shape, it's because a lot of us refinanced our largest liability over 30 years at 3% in the last couple of years. And so new mortgage rates have not really affected some of the housing market and some of the consumer spending, really. Um, the government uh, didn't do that, obviously. They've got about 31% uh, of all of the government outstanding debt is going to roll over in 12 months. So that's $7.6 trillion dollars will get you know, reissued at double the interest rate. So those interest expense payments are going to go up a ton. So we sort of know that. But on the corporate side, I, I thought it was interesting. Um, if you think about the um, fact that corporate America termed out its debt, just like the U.S. consumer did, it, it you know, new interest rates were basically as low as they were going to go. It wanted to push out maturities. It wanted to lower interest expense to uh, as good corporate stewards. In, and again, in the private sector, um, and, and, uh, so the, uh, there's in, in large companies in the U S about 60% of total debt in, in a large cap corporate America, uh, matures all the way out past 2030. And so they've got lots of runway, um, presumably interest rates will be lower when that stuff rolls over or, or maybe not where they were, but not as high as they are now. But I think it's interesting to look at the amount of cash. We all hear about companies you know, these big tech companies or any company that just has so much cash now. Um, and there's an interest earnings amount that they're getting on that, you know. So if a company has, call it $10 billion in debt they issued two years ago, and they didn't do anything with the debt, they just took the money that they borrowed and stuck it in a cash account, they're now earning 5% on it. So there's a 2% arbitrage between the amount of expense that they have to pay in interest and uh, the amount that they're earning uh, in, in cash. And so that's actually added to earnings a little bit, believe it or not. Um, I don't know that it gets talked about a ton, but uh, coming into the coming years, I guess you could say the opposite will be true if interest rates go down, but I don't think it will be as true. Um, so I'm not overly worried about that. But um, headline PC, we talked about um, the jobless claims today were uh, about in line. They came in at 218 for the month. We were expecting 215, so a little bit higher on, on, on uh, jobless claims, but the real story inside of that, I guess, was the continuing claims, which were significantly higher uh, at 1.927. Um, so the people that are unemployed basically are staying that way for a little bit longer. Um, so I guess if you read into that, it's a little bit cooling down of labor again, and we've seen that. But um, the uh, numbers today out of Chicago, um, again, it's just one region, but a, a decent one from a, a manufacturing index number. So the Chicago PMI number came in significantly better than expected. We got a 55.8, which is anything over 50s expansion. So they, this area hasn't been an expansion area for over two years. Um, 
And uh, uh, so, and this is the biggest jump since September of 2020 coming out of COVID. So it's pretty significant. And I wrote a little thing in there about it must be an anti uh, inverse correlation between the Bears no longer having a spot at the wild card um, in NFL. And so the people are going back to work or, or something like that. But I'm just, I'm just kidding. Um, but no, so, but the economic numbers were quite good out of Chicago. There, there was um, a cut in oil production from OPEC uh, plus today. So they, they reduced by a million barrels a day. Saudi had already done that. So this is in addition to that. So we've got a reduction. Again, oil prices have come down. And so they're curtailing some of the production. And uh, we saw oil move lower uh, today by about 3% uh, on, on some of that. Um, the um, but tomorrow we've got um, some ISM data. You know, first day of December. You know, David will be back with you on Dividend Cafe for tomorrow, and um, and we'll have some good things uh, over the weekend for you. With that, I will send it off to you tonight, and I hope you have a great evening. And reach out with questions as always. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm.